All right, extra credit. Remind me later. Okay, so yeah, again, the idea is, is I'm going to pick any direction that I want. So I'm just going to write the standard form for a direction vector. Just remember, a, a direction vector is a unit. So pick a direction. And all that means is, a, as far as calculus is concerned, a unit vector. Um, and you know, you can think of direction as like, well, I'm going to pick an angle on my compass, assuming your compass starts with angle zero as the x axis and not up. This is what compasses do. Um, so unit vectors will look like this. It'll be a unit vector, and we'll use vector notation this way. Um, but this is the cosine of whatever angle you pick and the sine of whatever angle you pick. So you know, if the angle is zero, then you just get you just get high. You're like looking east on the map. If the angle is 90 degrees, then your unit vector, if the angle is zero, then your unit vector is J. So you're kind of like looking north on the map. If your angle was 45 degrees, then you'll be looking like northeast. Um, but still it would it would fall on the unit circle because this is a unit vector. So what we do is uh, we want to know, well, what's the slope if I look northeast? So I'm standing on the side of the mountain, I point northeast, am I going, still going up and down the mountain? So the cool thing is it's actually related really closely. You know east and you know north, you can interpolate the rest um, using your function in this way. So we want to talk about the directional derivative in the direction of u. So that's what this is here. So Directional derivative, derivative of f in the direction of u. So, um, if you're a fan of Simpsons, this is duck here. And technically, and I'm just going to write this and then use some black magic to get past of it because it's Friday and this is like no proof Friday. Um, is I do the exact same thing. I take the limit as h goes to zero. I still make my fraction uh, where I've got f of something minus something. I'm going to divide by h. And now I'm going to let x and h. Um, I hope I never have done this. Let me just I squeeze it all in. I'm going to take part of that um, vector and put it on the h. So this will be x of h times cosine of theta and y plus h sine theta. So it's like I'm splitting the h. It's not all in the x direction or all in the y direction. And, and then it's kind of like a rise in the northeast direction if it was 45 degrees or the rise in whatever angle uh, divided by the run. Here. So that's the limit you have to figure out. And it can be tricky. You've got to stick in uh, x's and h's and cosines and sines, and you've got to work out all the algebra. And sometimes it doesn't actually exist. Hopefully, the function we're going to do it does. Um, and magically, so here's here's the uh, dot dot dot. Look over there. We'll do some black magic and some algebra. And what pops out is this answer is exactly the old f derivative with respect to x times cosine and the old f derivative in terms of y times sine. So you pick up like the cosine part of the east derivative and the sine part of the north derivative, or you can think of the i derivative and the j derivative, or the x derivative and the y derivative. So it's kind of like split between those two things. And let me rewrite that on, on the next page here. So u is equal to cosine sine, and you'll get this directional derivative is just the uh, f sub x, maybe I'll use this notation, times times cosine plus f sub y times sine. So that's pretty cool that you can get any slope that you want in any direction. If you knew the, the side the side and north, like the east and north slopes, 
you can just interpolate using the, the correct angle of the um, Now that's one way to write it. Here, here's another one. Uh, and, you know, it's like the exact same thing, but sometimes you're not going to be given cosine and sine. You're just going to be given like u1 and u2. You don't know necessarily what the angle is. You're just told that the unit vector has two numbers. I don't want to go back and figure out what the angle is. I'm just going to use the number. So in that case, we just replace the sine and the cosine with the u1 and the u2. The, the x derivative times u1 plus the x derivative times uh, u2. So it's a pretty simple formula. <clears throat> so this is math class. We can't make it too easy and understandable. So let's put some, uh, put some more stuff in there to make it less understandable. Well, I don't know. Let's tie it all together. You might have noticed this kind of thing before. What does this look like? It's the first component, it's kind of like the first component of u times something, the second component of u times something. If your brain is awake yet, this should kind of look like a dot product of some kind. And it is a dot product. So, so I don't know if that pattern kind of pops out. It's like boom, boom, and boom, boom. And those u1 and u2 are from the first and second components. So what is it the dot product of? Well, it's the dot product of these two vectors here, f, x, f, y. So that's, now you can start to see it's like first component uh, is f, x, first, second component is f, y. So that means I'm dotting it with u, uh, u1, u2. So that's another way of writing this all out. You don't have the angle, but you just have the unit angle. And then, uh, I don't know if you notice in math classes, like initially your books are about that thick, and then later they get this thick, and later they get this thick, and as you go up through uh, the higher levels, the books get smaller and smaller because they end up leaving out all the details. They shrink all the, bump, the all the notation down into these little tiny formulas. And you're like, how do I use that? Well, you got to go back and fill in all the gaps. Well, where are the gaps? So yeah, you got to go figure those out. Ah, that's a lot. Um, so here's the notation for this, and maybe engineering does this too. So lots of notation. They write duff is equal to. Well, the second thing is just the vector u. That's that part. So we need a notation for this first part. We need the vector that has the two derivatives in it. We need to call it something. And I don't actually know the history of where this comes from, but they write it like this. It looks like an upside down. Um, triangle, uh, and they write upside down triangle uh, to be called uh, the gradient. Mm -hmm. So it's like both slopes put together inside of one vector. Uh, and this upside down symbol, I think, is called a nabla. Um, so I don't know if there's history there. Um, and so it's just the directional derivative is find this gradient, got it with mu, and boom, I've got, my, I've got the slope in whatever direction. All right, enough theory. Try, try, try again for this. So, for example, here's my function uh, negative x squared y plus y x squared plus x y. And this. Uh, Tell you that the u vector is uh, 3, 4, and that's not a unit vector because it doesn't have length 1. So to find the length of this, we take the square root of 3, square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's 5. So there's my unit vector. So we want to find the directional derivative uh, in that direction. So find the direction derivative in a direction u. Um, okay, so uh, according to that last formula, what this means is that I'm going to find d, the derivative is in the u direction f, so dot here. So I need to start by finding the gradient vector. 
And all this is is just a vector that has the two derivatives of your function as the two components, the x and the y. So uh, the derivative with respect to x, hopefully this is you know, giving good practice with this for the homework. You think of y as a constant for the first part. So I get minus 2xy plus y squared plus y. That's the x, that's the x partial derivative. The y partial derivative is very similar. Minus x squared plus 2xy plus x. So all I need to do is just take the dot product of that uh, with u. So that means the directional derivative of f is this minus 2xy plus y squared plus y on the x squared plus 2xy plus y dotted with the vector 3 fifths 4 fifths. So you just got to multiply all that stuff out. And so first component, 3 fifths times minus 2xy plus y squared plus y plus 4 fifths minus x squared plus 2xy plus x. So really it's just the x component is of, uh, it's the x derivative times the x component of the uh, y derivative times the y component. So it's like split between the Three fifths, four fifths between the, between the two. Um, the final thing is in some of the homework ones, they'll say, well, actually, this, that's fine. This guy, directional, uh, the directional derivative at a specific point. So maybe we'll say at the point two, one. So if you're standing on the mountain and you go two, one, um, and you look in this direction, Three fours. It's not quite northeast. It's like a little bit above northeast, which is points a little bit more uh, y than it was x. Uh, then we just need to substitute in x equals two and y equals one into this direction over here. And I may, I'm going to spare you the algebra on that. I don't know. It's not too bad. Maybe. Minus four and one and one. And then this will be minus four and four and one. And then you put those all together, and the derivative will be positive two fifths. So we have a positive slope. If you're talking about hiking out there, that means that at least you're, you're going uphill if you walk in that direction three units over and four units up on your map. Go over three, go up four, and then look on, uh, look. Turn to that direction, you'll be walking slightly uphill at a slope of two fifths. Um, and that's really it. I mean, that's that's a that's a huge part of that, of that section. Um, there's a few other um, little things in there, but um, that's the main thing to understand is, is the dot, the, the directional derivative. So what what other the, you know, these little things are we talking about? Well, um, these things are talking about about slopes. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at like a topographic map, um, but suppose we have something like this, a little clip on that. Um, okay. So if we look at our little topo map here, first question I always ask is like, is that is that a um, is that a hill or a valley? You guys, what is the answer to that? Is that a hill or a valley? Uh, you don't know. That's right. That's right. So how do you know how to fix it? What do people do to make it like what, determine which one is where? Um, sometimes it's color. Like they'll use a darker color on like the outside or the inside. Yeah. Like signal depth. Right. Yeah. You gotta. You have to give this like another another characteristic in order to do it. I think sometimes they'll put like little tick marks on it, uh, and I, but then I never remember, wait, does the tick mark mean it's going downhill or uphill? It's not really, a, it's not clear. So it's easier if you just wrote numbers on it. You wrote like, you know, if you wrote 100, 200, 300, then you'd be like, okay, well, I'm going up. Now, the point I want to make on this is, 
suppose that you have a river or a stream or something on this map uh, and it's coming down this hill. Then I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but it turns out that water likes to go downhill as fast as it can. It doesn't like meander along and then slowly go down. It's like gravity pulls it as quickly down as it possibly can. So on a map, the fastest way down off of, off of any mountain is if you're standing on one of these lines, you go perpendicular to, the, to that curve. And that will be the steepest route down is perpendicular to that curve, and then perpendicular to that curve, and then perpendicular to that curve, all the way down. So if I'm sitting, I'm sitting right there, I'd want to go this way, and then here, looks like about that way, and then here that way. So if you look at streams on maps, unless there's some other weird formation, they will follow the perpendicular down the hill. Um, and, and not only that, it turns out that if you, if you were to draw this, it turns out that the gradient function is, is the one. It, is, it will tell you the slope um, that, is the, that goes downhill or uphill the fastest. So the largest, um, the largest slope on a map here will follow um, the, the gradient function. Or the gradient vector. And again, that was this, this thing here. Same thing if you're talking about temperature. If you want to, you want to know uh, like which path, like a heat-seeking missile or something like that. If it's going to go as fast as possible, then you do the temperature distribution, and you should follow the perpendicular, either in or out, whichever direction you're going. Um, so that means that the dub here is maximized because this is the slope, it's maximized if the U itself is actually um, the gradient vector divided by the length of the gradient vector. So it has to be a unit vector, so I can't just do like gradient uh, itself, because that might not be a unit, so I have to divide out by that. Uh, and so then, you know, what is, what is this? So what is the if the u vector is the gradient divided by the length. If I'm telling you that I get the maximum slope in that direction, okay, that tells me the direction, what is the actual maximum slope? So let's just calculate this. Um, Duff will be, well, what's the formula for that? It's the gradient of f dotted with u. Um, so if I put in this, this u here, I'll get the gradient of f dotted with the gradient of f over the length of the gradient of f. So if you believe what I've said up here, and again, sort of no, no proof Friday, um, then what do you get if you do the dot product of something with itself? Now we're coming way back. Turns out that if you take a vector, and you dot it with itself, you get the length, ah, don't like the whole thing, you get the length squared. I think you did that. Clearly it was in chapter 11 and we might have mentioned it in the Zoom passage, but that's exactly what we have here. We have the, the dot product. Now you're like, well, what about this denominator? Well, that's a constant multiple. So even with dot products, we know that we can pull constant multiples out. So we can do the dot product and get the length of the gradient squared over the length of the gradient by itself. So I have one length squared divided by another length. I get exactly the length of one of those lines in the length. The largest slope is whatever the length of the gradient function is. Um, so if you want to follow follow uh, the, the maximum path either up or downhill, you would follow the, the gradient which is perpendicular to the uh, line. So in the in the last example, um, the last example that was F, F is equal to negative x squared y plus xy squared plus xy. We were talking about at the point two one. 
right at the end. Let's just go ahead and do that now. The gradient uh, at that point, so at that point, uh, well, it turned out to be, let me, let me just recopy what the gradient was before we plug in the point. So the gradient is negative 2xy plus y squared plus y, negative x squared plus 2xy plus x. Now, if we do it at that point C, I probably should have calculated this out before, but plug in 2 and 1. So we get minus 4, and it's 2 times 2 times 1, and then minus. And then 1 squared and 1 squared, that'll be minus 2. And the second one will be 4 plus 4, um, and then so that would be, that'll be minus 4 and plus 4 and 2. So that's equal to 2. That's, that's the gradient thing. So the, the direction of maximum slope or maximum heat or maximum elevation change, whatever the application is, will be at the gradient. So 2 square root 2 divided by the length of that guy. And the length is, what's the length? So you square 2 and 2 square take, take the square root of negative 2 squared plus 2 squared. So that's 8. We get divided by the square root of 8. Uh, we can clean that up a little bit. Uh, that's 2 over 2, 2 square 2. And this is 2 square 2 on the bottom is 8. There is 8. And then we can cancel all these 2s and maybe put the thing on the inside. So we'll get negative 1 over square root 2 and 1 over square root 2. That's the direction that we're going to want to go. And the actual max flow. I already told you that's the length of the gradient, which is two square root two. So we already did that. So if you look at, if you're standing on your map, you're standing on your thing, you go to the point one, two, one, and sitting here at the point C. If you want to maximize your your, uh, your increase, which direction is this? That's over and down. We would have to go like southwest. If we're pointing southwest, then we would be going up you know, the steepest route on the mountain, perpendicular to the topo line, whatever the topo line is at that point. So that's pretty cool. That, that ties a lot of stuff in there. You're trying to find maximums or minimums in the engineering problems. We will talk about steepest ascent or steepest descent or steepest, um, uh, it's called the gradient method for approximating these things. Trust me, when you're doing thermodynamics later, you might mention it and just like that little spark in your head be like, wait a second, I kind of remember that. Or I didn't because it was summer and I was thinking about looking outside and going surfing. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's 12.6. Um, and so I think even though it's only half an hour here, I think that's probably a good place to take a quick break. We'll come back and do some homework problems. And then 12.7 uh, will finish things off. And that's fairly quick. It's about more tangent stuff. So uh, about 8.05, come back. And um, I will remember to hit record next time. Or I have my recorder person, so thank you for that. Um, so yeah, all right. So see you in about five minutes.